Hello, Big Gambo here. Today I'm just going to be photographing, as you can see, four different items and timing myself, as you can see by the timer. Um, and I'm also gonna be listing those same items and timing myself so that you can see how fast I'm able to do it so that you can kind of gauge how fast maybe you should be doing it. And that knowing how fast you do it's gonna help you out in the thrift store like with what type of items you're gonna be buying because I get a lot of people in the comments they'll say oh I would never pick up anything under $20 it's not worth my time but for that guy or gal it's actually usually a gal um, they're either really really slow at photographing and listing or they're kind of delusional about what their time is worth but if they go and they time themselves, maybe they maybe it does take them 20 minutes to photograph and list one item, which in my opinion is really slow. That's three per hour. So depending on how much money you wanna make per hour, like if you're picking up only $20 profit items, you're making $60 per hour while you're photographing and listing. That's not including the thrift store. So you need to make more while you're photographing and listing, which is the only time you're really making money doing this. Because outsourcing, you're just spending money. You're making the money when you're photographing and listing. So you need to be making more money per hour when you're doing that by doing more items per hour. And that way it actually gives you like a wider net you can cast when you're out in the thrift store because you can pick up some of those $5 profit items. Because like let's say you only did $5 profit items, but you can do 15 items per hour like I show you I can do here in this video. Um, if that's the case, you're making $75 per hour while you're at home processing the items, photographing them and listing them, which is pretty good. If we, you can like cut that in half and say half your time is spent in the thrift store. So you're making like what? Almost 40 bucks an hour. That's a pretty decent job. Pretty decent job. And chances are a lot of people that resell, they're not doing it just they didn't quit their you know, 200K a year job to become a reseller. They usually quit a taco place or they quit being a cashier at Target. But for some reason, they're just way above making $30 an hour or whatever it happens to be. Um, and that's just one thing I just really hate about resellers. Most of them are just, I've said this before, most of them are just completely lazy people who just really think they deserve money for nothing. It's totally, I'm not I'm gonna stop ranting now and we're gonna watch me. I'm actually watching myself do this with you. So there, I the reason I picked a pair of women's jeans is because that takes me longer to list usually and longer to photograph. Also takes me longer to put in the bag and I wanted it to be kind of more balanced. Whereas like when I'm doing t-shirts, I can do so many t-shirts so fast. And that's another reason I'm willing to buy t-shirts that sell for $10. Like I pick them up all the time because I can do more t-shirts per hour than I can do with jeans. Jeans, I'm looking for jeans that are gonna sell for over $20 per hour, be for over $20 because they take me longer. That's just all there is to it. Excuse me. All right, we did that one in about two minutes or so. And at the end, I'm gonna do the math and show you <coughs> my average time for like photographing the items, average time for listing the items, and my average items per hour that I'm able to do. And I picked this pair of cool shorts because I thought I had a style code and it was gonna take me longer, but actually it did not have a style code. So usually I will take that extra time when I'm photographing to take a picture of the style code. And then when I'm listing, I'll do the extra step of entering it into Google Images because you're gonna get more money. It might take an extra minute on the listing side and an extra 10 seconds on the photographing side, but it's that's like a, in that extra minute, you're making like an extra 10 or 15 bucks just by knowing the style. And also gaining that knowledge by getting the style, looking up the sell through rate of the style but because this is a just a regular pair of cool shirts, I'll probably price them at like 35 bucks and um, pretty much accept anything above like 22 or something. 
because I just kind of price in the middle. I copied it from Tech and Sports where he does, um, he calls them price buckets. So like he prices like kind of towards the higher end, not the highest, but towards the higher end. And then he also has all these different ways that you can, you can send an offer. And if it's within the lower end of his price bucket, he'll accept it. So like, like let's say mine for this one is 20 to $35. Anywhere in there, I'll pretty much accept it. And that makes listing easier because you can just list in that price bucket and you're gonna be good. Because if it's too high, you've got the coupons they can use, they can send you an offer, and that actually makes the listing process faster. But you do have to know, you do have to do some research and repeat buying the same items over and over again so that you're not like pricing it too low or too high. And also buying the same items over and over again. Speaking of that, this is San Jose Saki jersey. I'm not sure if I sold it, but I've definitely listed it before. And I've sold a lot of similar San Jose Sharks jerseys. So for this one, I'm gonna be able to just do a sell similar. And that's gonna kind of balance it out because I know those jeans and probably the shorts are gonna take me longer to list. But having t-shirts in there is gonna cut that time down as well. And see, I hold the camera like this. That's so that I can get it uh, oriented properly because with the iPhone it'll switch all the time and I don't want to be switching around the photos on my computer because that takes extra time it's actually quicker for me to just hold the camera upright for a second so that I get the, the proper um, what do you whatever it's called and you get pretty quick at folding once you do it a couple thousand times and my specific way of folding is tailored specifically to the bag that I use. If you use different bags, you're gonna fold your items a different way. Yep, and we are just about done. Let's grab the timer. Could have probably stopped it there, but I'm gonna add on a couple extra seconds for me. And then what you don't see is off the screen, I'm putting the items into a box. So this is also timing the, my put away time where I'm putting away my items because all that is is just putting it into a box and then I'm gonna pop a picture here. Here's the boxes and that rack to the left of the boxes, I just slide it onto that rack. That's the entire put away process of this. So one of the tricks to being faster at listing on the computer I think is having everything already set up and prepared. Um, I've got several tabs open here. I've got this one, which is my store, because um, I do sell similar off myself. And then I've also got, if it's something I haven't listed before, I've got this tab here, where I can either start a new listing up here or use one of these templates. And then I also have this tab open for research, this tab open for Google research, and this tab open for my uh, condition descriptions. And like when I first start listing and when I first start photographing, I usually keep my stopwatch next to me and I just um, time a couple of the first ones and that like sets me off. I usually forget after that, and it's, but it just sets me off at like a faster pace for all the other ones. I don't time every one I do, just like the first couple. Sometimes I'll time every one I do or I'll see like, how many can I do in 10 minutes? How many can I do in 20 minutes and stuff like that. Um, and I think that is also pretty helpful. All right, so I'm just gonna start this now. Of course, internet's going slow today. I don't know why I'm so nervous. That was Excel, right? So I've already got a lot filled out because I'm using a template. Okay, condition no stains. There actually was one tiny paint stain on the sleeve. Go 
go back up, double check, photos are there, custom SKUs there, pricing, first class clothing, boom, okay, off to a good start here. And this next one I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on. And I took too many photos, so I don't have enough room for my custom SKU. But that's okay. Actually, I'm going to leave the custom SKU, get rid of that. Let's, I forgot to start a new timer. Whatever. We got women's jeans. These are the wide leg crops. So for research, I'll do Madewell. I type so much shittier when I'm being filmed. Two listed. One of them is new though, and it's not jeans. And then sold, one sold that's also not jeans for 32. Back to the listed. I want 49, so I'll just be cheaper than that one. This one's gonna be longer. <sighs> this was the wrong shirt to wear. I like to wear a shirt with soft cuffs to rest on my computer. Wait, am I in the men's section? Fuck! Why did it put me in the men's jeans? So it's better to go all the way back. Oh, I put myself in the men's jeans. All right, we're, keep, we're keeping this. Damn it, see I'm nervous. 9219. But that's something that might happen in real life, so. At least we copy and pasted the title. Fuck, these are cropped. These are tall, blue. Takes forever to load the size. Solid classic comfort, high denim, cotton blend, waist size. Uh, 43. No, in scene, 27. Jesus, I totally blew this. There we go. All right, photos are there. Enough item specifics, condition, they were in great condition. So I'm gonna go 35, 8. Damn it. Totally blew that one, that took like three minutes. But that was with a mess up and with research, so. This one I don't have to research because it doesn't have a style code at least. With cool shorts, I need to focus. I don't have a, um, I don't have a uh, template for shorts right now. I need to make one. Cool shorts, men's 36, beige, khaki, hiking, outdoor, stretch, panels, um, cotton, are they cotton? Cotton blend. This would be slower because I don't have a template. But I already sell the same thing so many times that it should be a little faster. Nine two two one. Shit, was it thirty six? Thirty seven. 
mid-res 11 inch inseam. I'm just gonna call it canvas. There's no twill. I'm pretty sure they're twill, but there's no twill item specific. I call them regular, flat front, no. 11, no, no. I should have just done cell similar probably. All right, let's make sure I got this copied. Six, cool. Six, okay. Okay, we're getting back on track here. This might be a boring video, but this is very stressful for me. Uh, let's see. I might be able to do sell somewhere. Actually, no, I can. San Jose. Oh shit! This one didn't sell. I'm probably gonna price it cheaper then. Cause I think that's this. Is that the same size? That's that one's a medium as well. Shit. So I can price it cheaper. Nine two two zero. So this is like exactly the same item, which I kind of lucked out on. But I could probably add some more item specifics. Anytime, all the no and yes ones I pretty much always do. Sport. Yeah, I don't know what else I can fill out here. Great condition, no stains or damage. Gonna do for you. I'm gonna change. Oh, I originally had a price of 28. So I've sold them for like 25, but that other one didn't sell, so this is exactly the same item, so I'm gonna price it cheaper. Once it's deleted, we can stop the timer. All right, so if you're interested, here are the numbers. The Fox shirt took one minute and 40 seconds to photograph, one minute and 46 seconds to list, for a total of three minutes and 26 seconds. And then down here, the Sharks jersey took about the same amount of time, maybe a little quicker because I got to sell similar. So we can learn from this that selling similar will save me about 15 seconds usually, which is, it does add up over time, but it's not that much faster. This is why I recommend timing things, because you actually learn quite a bit. The Madewell jeans took me slightly longer to photograph, but way longer to list because I made that mistake. Now the mistake cost me about a minute and a half, so it really didn't take much longer than the shirt to list, but it definitely took longer to photograph. And we can see from here, the cool shorts also took slightly longer to photograph, but not much longer. So basically, everything I can do in about well, we have that down here. The average is 3 minutes and 58 seconds per item. Listing takes 2 minutes per item. Photos take a minute and 50 seconds per item. This would actually be lower, probably down closer to a minute 50 if uh, we didn't screw up on those Madewell jeans. But because we know we do one every 4 minutes, that is 15 per hour. So depending on how much I want to make per hour while I'm working at home, um, that's how I'm going to choose what I'm buying in the thrift store. And I'm totally fine with some of my items being uh, five bucks, but my average is usually closer to $11 because I'm buying like a lot of the, I'm buying hundred dollar items sometimes when I can find them, but I'm supplementing that to hit my listing goal every day with those uh, $5 profit items. But anyways, here's the numbers. I recommend that everyone does something similar to this because uh, I actually learned some stuff too. Like. I learned that pants, I thought they took a lot longer to photograph and they really only took an extra maybe 20 seconds. And that's probably half of that squeezing them into the bag. So yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see. So yeah, thank you for watching. My name is Big Yumbo.